Hello everyone, welcome back to Mihal Progression, episode 2. To start this video out, I have a topic to discuss that I completely overlooked. In the last video, I received a comment from somebody asking why I used an epic potential scroll on the frozen shield I received, when the basic level 100 one I had has better stats. To be honest, I didn't even notice this at the time, but because of this, I want to cover best in slot secondaries for Mihail, since neither the frozen nor the standard level 100 shields fill that role. First, let's go over basic secondary progression. Most people are going to be familiar with this since it's the most common gear progression for most classes. For most classes, the progression goes as follows. Level 100 secondary, frozen if you have it, and then princess no. Some classes will use a demo shield instead of a princess no secondary, and then you have the classes who haven't been properly balanced. For Mihail and a few other classes, the best in slot secondary is actually from Evolution Lab. If we compare the stats of an Evolution Lab secondary to Princess No, you'll see that Evolution Lab is slightly better, and since level 140 equips don't provide any kind of potential bonus over level 100 equips, there's absolutely no reason to get Princess No unless you just wanted to collect it or something. So with that being said, I'm going to start working towards obtaining an Evolution Lab secondary since it's considered my best in slot secondary. Starting off I killed normal Hilla, which is something I do every day, but this time was particularly special because I got a pretty decent flame on a pair of warrior shoes. 16 base strength, 5 attack power, and 4% all stats. Not an incredible flame, but definitely better than what I had on my Pencilier shoes, so I figured it was time for a replacement. I briefly considered putting an epic potential scroll on it, but luckily I didn't because after just a few cubes it tiered up to epic on its own. After a few more cubes, I got 6% strength on it and was pretty satisfied with that result. Uh, but just quickly, I wanted to show my stats starting out in this video. And as you can see, I'm sitting at 3.8k strength currently. But we'll see how that progresses by the end of this episode. Anyway, now it's time to get into the main content of this episode, prequests. First I wanted to do Rutabis and get it out of the way since I'm going to have to clear all the bosses 10 times each to attempt CRA. I was able to take out each of the bosses stupidly easy since I waited until level 200 to even try. And then after that I went to Commercy to knock that short prequest out of the way. It's pretty straightforward, but doing Commercy every day is quite tedious even though the rewards are very worthwhile. With the amount of time it takes to produce these videos, most of my time spent on Maple is just doing my dailies, so I actually accumulate Denaro pretty quickly. So quick, in fact, that I didn't even manage to get a face accessory from Zakum with potential on it before I was able to buy the Sweetwater tattoo. So next up was the prequest I was kind of dreading the most, uh, the Princess No prequest. I spent the beginning of this video detailing why I don't need Princess No secondary on my Mihail, which might be a little confusing, but the reason I'm doing this is for the accessories you get from the first part of the prequest. For completing Hayato's segment, you receive a shoulder accessory that's actually not bad. All three of these accessories are quite good, and since you can get them at level 140, they're an absolute no-brainer for any class. The next one on the list is Kana, and the ring you get as the reward. This ring is very, very good. If you can manage to get it up to 21 stars, it's comparable to a Meister ring and a Superior Gallic's ring. However, you can only ever get one of these Kana rings, so it's not quite as common since it's pretty easy to accidentally destroy. The final of the three stories you have to play through is Ayame, who is a very strong and pretty cool character to play as. Unfortunately, not a real class, no matter how much we may ask. Anyway, the reward you get is her belt, which is alright, it's just outshadowed heavily by just about any other good belt. The last prequest I did today was Von Leon prequests. Another one that can be kind of tedious, but it wasn't so bad, and I used a 2 times drop coupon throughout to help speed it up. Once it was over, I went to take on Von Leon himself, and while I considered doing hard mode, I decided against it for today, and decided to do normal mode instead. It was quite an easy fight, but I was pretty tired of doing prequests after that, so I went to cap a weight coins, and this is the moment I fell in love with Mihail.
I quickly reached level 201 during this grind and suddenly remembered that I had to do Papulatus requests as well. But since they're very short, I just went ahead and knocked it out real quick and then killed Easy Papulatus. Reset was coming up soon at this point and I had to do my, mo my monster park runs. After that I tried to take on normal Populatus and while I think I could have cleared it I just wasn't super familiar with Mihail at this point and failed after killing the first body. Then I went back to Von Leon to try and clear hard mode which was pretty hard but I managed to do it. Not too bad of a fight really. After I took a break, I came back to do even more prequests. Silent Crusade was what I had my eyes set on next, since it unlocks Arcarium, who is a somewhat important boss to farm. I was able to take out Easy Arcarium, but didn't get a pendant drop, which is unfortunate. But then it was back to grinding again, capping awake coins and trying to level up. I reached level 202, finished capping, and went on to the next prequest. The Magnus prequests are kind of a pain, but really none of these are as bad as the old Gallix prequests, which would easily take over an hour and a half on our own. I finished the Magnus priest pretty quickly and moved right on to the next one. This is the Afterlands. Not really a prequest, I guess. That's kind of a colloquialism. It's just a quest line with a good reward. Four totems that aren't strictly necessary, but considering the nature of this episode, I figured it was worth doing, even though I usually skip it on most characters. Anyway, I finished that off, got my totems, and it was back to capping coins since reset had occurred again. I capped on my Mihail and went over to my Cannon Master to cap on that character as well. I had started buying the Awake Damage Skin coupons on that character, so I figured it was probably just most efficient to finish getting all 10 instead of trying to start over on my Mihail. After that, I asked my Discord if anyone was willing to give me an HMAG carry, and my friend Sin was up to the task. After far too much, she managed to kill it, and I checked the drops. Unfortunately, no cape, so I thanked Sin appropriately and moved on. At this point, I had realized I hadn't done the Arcane River prequest, so I went ahead and knocked those out too. During these prequests, I got to level 203, and then during the dailies I did afterwards, quickly got to level 204. I turned in my dailies and received enough symbols to level up my Vanishing Journey symbol to level 2. And since Reset had yet again occurred at this point, I did my usual daily routine and received a pretty nice eye accessory from Zackum. At this point I was kind of getting sick of not having enough etc slots, so I went ahead and dropped a bit of mesos on expanding my etc slots to max. Today I also tried taking on hard Ron Maru, and after a little bit of a fight I was able to kill him. I was feeling a bit confident at this point and decided to take on normal Populatus again and actually managed to kill it this time.
During my usual daily RA runs, I managed to get two advanced potential scrolls in one run, which was a pretty good get. Earlier today, I'd received a Mechanator Pendant from an Arcarium run, so I went ahead and used a potential scroll on it and tried to get some good potentials. It cubed up to epic, which is nice, and I landed on 6% strength, started to 11, and proceeded to just let it sit in my inventory since I had a pendant of the spirit on. After that, I went to Eastern Cave Path 1 in Vanishing Journey and grinded up to level 205. I opened up a perfect trio node from the free node stones I received for reaching level 205 as a burning character and went on to do my last prequest of this episode. Reverse City. It wasn't too bad, but it's a bit unfortunate that I don't utilize this area as a trading spot, like at all, since it's a pretty cool place. After the quest line was done, I leveled up my Vanishing Journey symbol to level 3, and this is where the stats are at the end of this episode 4.7k strength up from 3.8k. So I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video, it means a lot to me. I really enjoy making these and I don't have any plans to stop anytime soon. Expect the next episode in maybe a week or so. I'm getting a little better at uh, my workflow regarding uh, heavily, episode heavily edited episodes like this. So they might not take as long to produce in the future, but honestly, I, I can't say. I was not prepared for how long it takes to edit some of these videos. Anyway, that's all from me for now. I'll see y'all next time.